Welcome back, and let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We're now very much in the final hours of our Advent preparation, getting ready for Christmas. Depending on when you watch this, we might be about in the last 24 hours. Our first reading today speaks of that theme that we've been having time and time again, that purification that happens within us. And so just briefly, this idea of metal being purified in fire, specifically mentioning gold and silver. And we go through that at different times of our life. We'll go through it for at least most of us in purgatory after this life is over, before we enter into heaven. But just imagine again the great desire of God that everything he has us go through, the good and the bad alike, is to make us better, is to make us better receptors of his grace, and to be, be purified, to remove all of those imperfections within our life. And again, isn't this what every good parent wants? We talked about parenting yesterday, but every parent, for a lot of different reasons, some more selfish than others, wants our kids to be perfect. And so we want to remove those difficulties, those struggles, and those trials, receive the goodness of God. And so just to pray with the great love that God has for us, and again, trying to have that attitude of gratitude of thanking God in all things, especially in our trials. But I want to look at our gospel, continuing along in that same theme from Luke, getting us ready for the birth of Christ. Today we have the um, presentation and the birth of the John the Baptist. Elizabeth has her child. They take him on the eighth day to circumcise the child, and they're going to call him Zechariah after his father. And mom says, nope, his name is John, because of how Things were at the time, they go to ask dad. And of course, dad still can't speak because he's in this moment of silence. So he asks for a tablet. He writes John's, John is his name. He's all amazed. And then Zechariah is able to speak. Then we're told that everybody starts to freak out. They're all scared at what they've seen because I know that this is surely God working through Zechariah, working through Elizabeth, and now John. And so I want to just encourage you to pray with that scene some today. Because again, sometimes when we read the scriptures, we think, oh, that's in the Bible. It's going to be a weird story. And we don't think about it too critically. But just imagine, you know a couple who's always wanted a kid, hasn't had a kid, but they're a little older. Seems to be like they're well past that time being able to have a child. Then they conceive. About the same time, the husband quits being able to speak. He goes silent. Child comes to be born, taken to the temple. He writes down the kid's name on a tablet in the temple. It's going to be, of course, encounter with God location. Then all of a sudden he starts to speak again. Just imagine that with somebody you would know in your own life. That is not normal. We want to be mindful of that. We want to put ourselves in a realistic reaction and trying to expect and better understand what God is doing in their lives and how these people are responding. And so, of course, people are going to talk. It makes it all the way through Judea, we're told, in the text. But all who heard these things kept saying, what then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. And so there's fear, there's expectation, there's all sorts of craziness in our life. And so again, just something for us to pray with. Again, sometimes God's will can be scary. Sometimes those things that God asks us to do is scary. One of the things I mentioned in a couple of different settings, but oftentimes with those who are looking to join the church or those who have questions about the faith and they're starting to, to wrestle with who God is. And we want to make sure we understand that God is not this wish granter, this just nice guy in the sky that takes care of everything and makes everything lollipops and rainbows and cotton candy and all that happy, nice stuff that sometimes the world paints God as doing. Now, God is moving us in the direction of his peace, of his love of all that goodness that he has in store for us, which we've been talking about some throughout our Advent season. That's what heaven will be. But in this life, because we are sinners living in a sin-sick world, there has to be suffering and difficulty for us to enter into love. And so I often point out to these people um, something from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe from C.S. Lewis. Uh, it's a beautiful text about Jesus, um, just 
piece of fiction. And talking about this Christ-like figure and these little children, the Christ-like figure Aslan is a big lion, and they ask, is he safe? And the response is, no, he is not safe, but he's good. And it's a beautiful thing, I think, for us to pray with. And it sort of stuck out of my mind because we expect him to be um, safe. He's just going to coddle us and take care of us and make us wrapped up in this nice, soft blanket that we can never get hurt. That's not what God does. Again, Zechariah, we talked about this on the day that we read of him going mute. Zechariah has to go through nine months of quiet, of just time with God where he can't speak, where he has to learn how to listen, where he has to open up his heart to the will of God. And that God makes him carry it all the way through to fulfilling the command of God. He doesn't get his voice back before he says his name is John. He can't say that out loud, at least at this first moment. I'm sure he says it many times later. But he has to wait till he fulfills what God has asked him to do, and then his voice is restored. Sometimes God makes us wait longer than we would like. I'm sure John, after three months, would have been ready. Okay, God, I get it. Give me my voice back. I will do what you told me to do. I will fulfill it. I'll give him that name. In all the different ways we can pray with it. But God hasn't persevered to the end. And in these final couple of days, final matter of hours, make sure we stay in the Advent season as best we can. We can have this temptation of jumping into Christmas too early. It's still Advent, still a time of preparation. The more we can prepare and make it all the way to the finish line of whenever we make it to Mass, begin the official celebration of Christmas, the more beautiful it will be within our own lives. Maybe just a couple of things to keep in our own hearts to continue to ponder and to continue to wrestle with. As we continue in this Advent season, we'll just pray for one another. God bless.